Welcome to my second tutorial on creating a GUI using libgdx. The only thing we're going to do in this tutorial is add a background image to our GUI to make the login screen look a little bit more exciting. I've gone to the website Pixabay because this website hosts a large number of photographs and other um, created images that are very high quality and often freely licensed. I've searched for Disco and returned, received the following results. Unfortunately, the very, very top row of results is always very pricey and they're supplied by Shutterstock. They are high quality, but you would need a lot of money to use these files last legally. So what I'm going to do is choose one of the other results and I'm going to choose this one because it's not too busy, but it is still interesting. If I sc scroll down, I can see that this is licensed in public domain, which gives me the right to do pretty much anything I feel like with it. If I download this, I can see that none of the sizes available are 800 by 600, which is the size I want. So what I'm going to do is download it in a slightly bigger file size and then scale it down using some kind of photo, photo editing software. So I'll choose 1280 by 1092. I would never choose smaller and scale up because that would give me pixelation. I'm going to be using Photoshop to edit my image. If you don't have a copy of Photoshop, you can download GIMP which is a free and open source software, and it is very thorough and provides you with all the necessary resources. I've opened my image up in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do is resize the image to 800 by 600. If I choose a width of 800, I'm going to be left with a height of 729. If I decided to change the height to 600, I would be left with a width of 658, which would be too narrow. So I'm going to do what I did previously and go for too big and crop the picture down. That way again I should avoid any pixelation. Right, what I need to do now is choose some sort kind of cropping tool and crop the image to 800 by 600. I check the information box and my current selection is 800 wide, 656 tall. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit to get to 600 and push enter to crop the image. This is now the perfect size for my game. Unfortunately, libgdx only accepts images that are a power of 2. The next biggest power of 2 after 800 by 600 is 1024 by 1024. I don't however want to stretch the image to 1024 by 1024 because then it's going to be too big to display properly. So instead of resizing the image, I'm now going to resize the canvas. If you can't find similar functionality in whatever software you're using, you could always create a new transparent image that is 1024 by 1024 and then just cut and paste into your image. I'll change the height to 1024, sorry, width to 1024 and the height to 1024 and I now have an image that is the perfect size for libgdx. Let's save this as background.png. If you'd created a new image, then it would be the current format would be PSD, which is Photoshop's own um, format that it uses. And so you'd have to change it to PNG or JPG if you wanted to use it with libgdx. Before I can use the image in our project, I need to refresh my Android project so that it appears in the directory. Note that if I, I had I saved this into the Android directory, had you not done so, you'd have had to move it into the Android directory and then refresh. I can now add the background to our GUI. In the login screen constructor is currently where we are displaying everything, so I'm going to create my background image there. I'm going to create it after I've created the stage and the skin, although it's not strictly necessary to be after the skin because I do not refer to the skin. To create an image, we want to use a texture. I'll call it background text. And this is a new texture. And the only parameter I need to pass it is the file handle, which is from gdx.files.internal. And the path is background.png. I don't want the full image, 1024 by 1024. I only want part of it. To achieve that, I can use a create a texture region which I'll call background text reach. This is a new texture region. 
and the only arguments this takes is the texture itself, which is background text, and then the width and height we use. A texture region defaults to start off in the top left corner. If you would like to use a different starting point, you could also pass it the coordinates of that. Let's import texture and texture region. I can attempt to add texture region to the stage now. This will complain though because texture add actor expects an actor and background texture region is not an actor. Fortunately, there is a simple um, picture display which is an actor and that is an image. All I need to pass as the argument to image is my background texture region. You could also just pass it a plain straightforward texture but that would be wasteful if we're only using part of it. Let's import image. Again, you'll see two options, one for com.badlogic, one for java.awt. We want to go with the com.badlogic one. We've got to give this a name. Let's call this background. All I need to do now is add background to the stage. If I run this, you can now see that we have a background on our login GUI and it already looks better. Then that's all for this tutorial. The next tutorial will cover realigning our elements using a table.